All right. Well, I am Grant from Screen Rant. Good to see everybody. How are you all today? It rhymes. Grant from Screen Rant. It rhymes. I like it. It does. It rhymes. It's uh, quite the coincidence. It was not planned that way. <laughs> but if you were in England, you'd be Grant from Screen Rock. Rant. No, no, it wouldn't work. Uh, well, I'm glad uh that I finally gotten to see uh the first two episodes so that I can dive in a little deeper um with all of you. Uh Megan, I'll start with you. Uh I love the relationship uh or the friendship, I should say, between Markella, you and Markella in those first two episodes. What was it like developing that rapport with one another off camera? Oh, it was so lovely. It was amazing to be able to like hang out with her and go for dinner and like call it work. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was so nice. We instantly got on, you know, we're the same age. We've had similar life experiences and we just kind of immediately got on with each other, which was just really lovely. Um, but we had like a lot of workshops at the very beginning in order to develop, do like character development. We had some um, workshops with J.A. and then J.D. and Patrick. Um, I think we had about three um, one of them that was just purely about our relationship and then we sort of like involved um, other beings and sort of scenes and everything which we kind of developed but it was really lovely to really feel those characters and there are so many moments when on set when I would be in a scene with Markella and I just wouldn't see Markella I would just see Nori and it was just so beautiful to really be in those moments with her and she's so dear to me and I love her very much. Well, it certainly comes across in, in the <laughs> episodes. So that's amazing that you, you've developed that bond. Um, Charles, I'll turn to you next. Uh, Kelly yeah. Brimbor is quite the well-known character within the, the Tolkien universe, but yeah. hasn't really been explored on screen, save for those couple of uh, Mordor video games. So what was that yeah. like for you coming into this you know major role for the series? Well, very obviously, very exciting and very uh, very privileged to be doing so. Um, I mean, Keller Brimbor is, yes, very well known to the Tolkien fans, but I would suggest that for the, for the, for the rest of us, he, he wasn't a, a known name. So it's rather a nice position to be, uh, it's twofold. You, you're, you're starting with a character who many people haven't heard of, and those who have heard of him have only got the, a, the bare essentials provided for them by Tolkien thus far. So to be presented with an opportunity to, to take a few little, um, uh, you know, signposts and um, hints from Tolkien um, without going against anything or, or distorting anything that he wrote, that's quite a luxurious position to be in and for there to be room within that to play and uh, and, and develop further. So um, that's my take on the role. I'm, I'm very, very happy to be playing it. So I'm curious, with this exploration of the elven world um, in this first age of Middle-earth, can we look forward to uh, references to the Silmarils and Feanor in uh, in regards to Celebrimbor and um, Robert's character? I'm struggling with the name. Elrond. Elrond, yeah. Elrond there we go. My answer to that is short, quite possibly. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep a little bit of secrets, I get it. <laughs> Um, Nazanin, I'll turn to you next. Um, in the first two episodes, we get to see you be this really powerful woman uh, in your town, I should say. What was it like for you, you know, really getting to explore the different facets? I'm trying hard not to spoil the second yeah. episode. <laughs> oh, gosh. Thank you. Thank you for not spoiling. Um I am so excited because Bronwyn is so multifaceted. She's a mother to a, a, a she's a single mother to a, a rebellious teenage son in a forbidden a romance with an elf who is watching over her people. Um, you know, Arondir is tasked as an elf to watch over the Southlanders. So there's a power dynamic there of uh, the occupier and the occupied being in love, um, and. Also, on top of that, the reason he's watching over the Southlanders is because the Southlanders, historically, Bronwyn's ancestors, um, chose the side of evil over good. So she's very much invested in redeeming the Southlanders and having them move on from that. Um, and I love that you get to see this multifaceted healer mother in a forbidden romance with an elf also show gumption and incredible tenacity, as you will see in episode two. <laughs> Yes, we certainly did see it. And uh, I can't wait for, for audiences to see it as well. Now, Lloyd, uh, you're still absent in those first two episodes. So uh, I'm excited to see what comes of you. But uh, so can you give me any kind of tease of, of what we can expect from you in the in the coming episodes? 
I can try my very best to do so. Yeah, no, I mean, I think where we find Elendil, so th those people that know Tolkien's universe will know that who Elendil is. He's an archetype hero. Ultimately, we've got to get him from the beginning of this series to, to leading the last alliance of, of elves and men as a king, finally, and his self-sacrificial death at the hands, you know, fighting off Sauron at the very end. So so, so there's there are a few signposts along the way from what Tolkien has written, but you know, this great responsibility to bring this character to life and a, and a tremendous excitement in, in, in doing so. So I'm, I'm, I feel very privileged to be in that position where we find him at the beginning uh, in Numenor, he's a ship's captain, he's incredibly capable, uh, he's a widower. So he's trying to deal with his own grief and the grief of his adult children being Isildur and Arion and a new character that we have, which is his daughter, Earion. Um, and so he's moved to the capital city of Numenor. He's moved away from the West and where the faithful are pragmatically and, and because of the emotional trauma of that, of that loss to start a new life. And he can fit, he becomes, he gets sucked into the politics of Numenor and where we find Numenor at the beginning of this series is right on the, on the sort of precipice. There's, the, there's a schism in society between the faithful, which is where he is from, and the sort of more, more nationalistic Numenorians who are who are who've become quite anti-elf. They are envious of the elven immortality, and they're they're wanting some of that for themselves. So, and that that schism and that polarization is also we're going to see becomes reflected in his own immediate family with his with his children. And so, there's a lot for him. His head is pushing one way, and his heart is yanking him the other way. And like we all know, we all know that feeling. Um, and so that's where we find him at the beginning of the episode. There's a, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to be going on with for him. Well, I look forward to when we finally get to see you and I look forward to seeing how the rest of your journeys play out in season one. Thank you all so much for taking the time to chat. I greatly appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. Thank Love you. to talk to you. Thank you.